Thank you for participating in the Learn to Aviate series with Master Instructor Rich Stoll, brought to you by Community Aviation. The goal of this series is to reduce the frequency of pilot error. Historically, the National Transportation Safety Board has listed pilot error as a cause or a factor in the majority of general aviation accidents. But what if pilots are not receiving the knowledge or skill during their training to be able to handle a particular scenario? Is it fair to blame it on pilot error in those cases? Hi, I'm Rich Stoll. The Learn to Aviate series is part of Community Aviation's Learn Do Fly framework, which integrates academic and practical training for an optimal learning experience. These presentations are the academic part. The emphasis is on studying and reasoning that will enhance your level of knowledge. To the extent possible, I will take a pilot-centric approach to our topics. The premise is that flying does not happen to the pilot, rather it happens because of the pilot. Our actions have performance consequences. In other words, if you do this, the airplane will do that. The hope is you will come away from these presentations with a deeper understanding about how to interact properly with your airplane. The scope of this series is limited to general aviation. We are light airplane pilots flying light airplanes. We will focus mostly on positive G flight. And for illustrative purposes, we will assume a pilot and an airplane that are capable of performing any maneuver in any attitude. Remember that our most effective mitigation and intervention strategies against an in-flight loss of control consist of awareness, prevention, and recovery. This is part of risk management, and as pilots in command, we always need to consider risk in our decision making. The Dutch Roll exercise offers an ideal demonstration of banking without turning. The wings are banked continuously from side to side using coordinated aileron and rudder inputs while the airplane remains on a constant heading. If we leave the aileron in long enough, the airplane will complete a 360 degree roll with no turn. We can also do a four point roll stopping every 90 degrees without turning as well. We use coordinated aileron and rudder to roll in and then some aft elevator to pull the nose along the horizon. And if I set the trim properly, I can go hands and feet off. The ailerons are neutral, the rudder's neutral. The elevator trim is set to pull the nose along the horizon line. I go hands back on now, I'll do a slipping turn. So I'm going to apply top rudder and low wing aileron, in this case right rudder, left aileron. Still using elevator to manage the turn, but now it's a slipping turn. I've got net left aileron deflected to the left. I've got net right rudder pointing toward the sky. And the nose is riding somewhat up and away from the position it was for the coordinated turn. 
If I go to the slipping, uh, from the slipping to the skidded variant, I've got inside rudder and outside aileron. In this case, rudder pointing toward the ground, left rudder. Right aileron pointing toward the sky, yet I'm still doing a left turn because of the back pressure on the elevator. Think about the different turns you can do at a given angle of bank. Pulling the right amount of G with the elevator results in a steady, level turn. Pulling more G than is required initiates a climbing turn. And not pulling enough G for the given bank angle results in a descending turn. Depending on the bank, sufficient pull may be able to return you to the steady, level turn. to simply let go of the elevator, the default turn will be whatever the elevator trim is set for. Now I can vary the trim setting here and initiate a climbing turn or a descending turn or back to a level turn. The next variation will be a Dutch roll while turning. I'm going to use coordinated aileron and rudder to the left to roll, set the bank. Neutralize, and now I'm using back elevator to pull the nose along the horizon. Continuing to pull just enough elevator to track the horizon line, I'll now commence a Dutch roll. Right aileron, right rudder, left aileron, left rudder. Right aileron, right rudder, left aileron, left rudder. All the while continuing to pull back on the elevator just the right amount, even though the bank angle is varying, to keep the nose tracking along the horizon line. Shondell to the left. Aileron and rudder in. Stop pulling the nose to initiate the climbing turn and pulling the nose to the 90 degree heading mark, keeping the bank constant with continuous opposite aileron. Now, the next 90 degrees, we're going to maintain a constant nose up pitch attitude, turning left, rolling to the right, the wings level, 180 degree climbing turn around. Also do a rolling turn, which we do a full roll, blended in with a 90 degree heading change. In this case, we'll do it to the left. So at this point, I'm rolling left and pulling the nose to the left. Halfway through now, I'm switching to pushing the nose through, continuing rolling left.
Hi, I'm Billy Winburn, a pilot and president of Community Aviation. I want to thank you for your interest in this learning series. Now that you've acquired this new knowledge, I'd like to challenge you to do more. Take the next step and reinforce the academics with some deep practice. We've developed flight simulation exercises and scenarios that you can fly at flight training centers across the country. It's all about skill building. Then get in the airplane with a qualified instructor and embed those procedures with a syllabus-based training program. I hope you join us as we continue to build a network of experts, educators, instructors, and subject matter authorities motivated by the same desire, improving flying skills and creating safer pilots. Welcome to the community and thank you.